Assalamu alaikum wa rahman salahi wa barakatuh. Hey fish family, welcome back to Tabarak Aquatics. And I am Ross, and you're here in my fish room. <laughs> I have uh, one of my subscribers uh, told me that I need to change, uh, I need to stop calling the fish room and call it something else because uh, everybody on YouTube has a fish room. So <laughs> I'll be coming up with something, Mike. <laughs> But right now it's my fish run right down here in my basement. Anyway, guys, um, welcome back. And uh, if this is your first time, uh, you know, checking me out, this is your first time on the channel, uh, welcome to you. And I hope that you like what you see. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Please leave a like, uh, you know, thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, and all that good stuff. Let's keep it respectful, of course. Uh, though I do welcome criticism, I do uh, welcome thoughtful criticism, and you being open to me giving you a respectful response, all right? Now, with all that said, uh, today uh, today what we're going to be focusing on is just basically just talking monster fish, all right? Um, those of you who follow my channel, you know that I love monster fish, and I also love cichlids. I love all kinds of different sorts of fish, but mostly monster fish uh, and cichlids and some oddball fish or whatever. You know, um, I haven't given a I haven't given a talk or a conversation just straight up about monster fish in quite some time. So we're going to touch upon uh, because I get a lot of comments, people asking me about monster fish, and uh, you know. Um, so anyway, let's talk about. It. All right, fish family, I decided to do something different. Uh, I'm just gonna film this casually, film this tank as, uh, as I talk to you about these monster fish. All right, so about monster fish, um, I would say as expensive as they are, it's best to get them uh, very small and grow them out and um, you know, see, uh, it's going to be some that you like their personality, and there's going to be others that you don't. It's going to be some that's going to be sickly and more vibrant, more strong. Um, you know, uh, so for me, all of these guys, except for that big catfish right there, but all of these guys, every last one of them, I got as a tiny, tiny fish. Oh, yeah, and also that that are fire eel because they take forever to grow. But those uh, peacock bass, those datanoids, uh, my pikes, my arowanas, my jaguar, you know, I got all of this teeny tiny babies. Um, that Zebrina pike I got as a juvenile, and so it was about half that size. It's very hard to find them as teeny tiny babies. But those red pikes over there, I got them as teeny tiny babies. So uh, I would say uh, that's that's the first thing. You want to probably get them as really small babies and put them in a uh, grow out tank. Um, the ideal size grow out tank to put them in, honestly, is a 125. Um, you want to give them plenty of chance to to grow out. Um, and breathe and stretch out while you plan your next tank if, you're, if you don't already have, you know, uh, something as big as a 210 to a 350 or above, you know, you want to plan your next tank. So get a 125 to give you just enough time because, you know, uh, these guys going to take about a year or two uh, to get up to optimal size for you to want to upgrade them into a super large tank. Uh, also, uh, you want to consider, um, you know, personality. So you got, you got purpose and you have personality. Like that um, sailfin uh, pleco that just went up to the top. I guess the gas to get a gulp of air if you don't sit it often. But of course he got a purpose. His purpose is to try to keep the, the glass clean and, you know, keep the wood clean and try this. He's part of the cleanup crew. Of course, he make a mess, but I got other devices in there blowing that debris around, blowing the boo up and stuff and get that sucked down into uh, my, my sump. That flag tail for Chilotus right there for Pritchilotus, flag tail for Chilotus. Uh, his purpose is that he likes to eat on, like, 
right now. He like to eat on um, algae and detritus, but mostly algae. So he cle he keeps this tank uh, clean from the algae. And um, so then you have personalities. So as you can see, though, that's four of the five Sumatran dadnoids. Actually, I got four Sumatran dadnoids and one endo dad in here. And um, you know they balance out the aggression amongst each other. Then you have, um, you know, the jaguar cichlids and the pike cichlids and so forth. You have to consider personalities and how to balance that out, okay? Because if you don't have enough personalities in there, what happens is that you'll have one or two fish that decide they want to pick on everybody else. So you got to have a strong personality in there that's pretty reasonable. And that would be my jaguar cichlid that got in strong personality, but he's very reasonable. He is a tank boss. Even though he's not the most dominant fish in here, the most dominant is going to be the arowana. Nobody messes with the arowana. And of course you know why. Because he's humongous. Um, but the, um, what I like about that jaguar is that when the other fish get to acting up, you know, the pikes and so forth, when they get to fighting and carrying on, that Jaguar sick, but he comes over and he referees, you know, and keeps keep them from fighting the camera. There's my catfish, my giant catfish. His purpose is that he's just, what's a monster tank without a monster catfish? Point blank period, okay? <laughs> well, that's Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer, I call him. Sorry, y'all, I hope I didn't, don't offend anybody, but I call him that because he likes to eat his tank mates. Tank mates go missing. But uh, after the he, he, he's only eating two tank mates, but that's all it took for those fish to learn. Hey, this guy likes to eat the tank mates. Let's stay clear of him <laughs> when he dart around or whatever. So he ate a very expensive lenticulata pike that I was growing out in here. And he ate a um, Ansorgi Bisher or Bashir that I was growing out in here. It was a good size Bashir. It was pretty big. <coughs> Oops, that was my water bottle I just kicked over. Um, well, anyway, uh, let me keep let me keep moving. Um, so you want to think about your um, your water volume uh, because these guys, when I do feed them, they eat a whole lot, they poop a whole lot, they make a big mess, and your uh, ammonia is going to jump up there, okay? For about a day or day and a half, your ammonia is going to, it's going to creep a little bit. It's not going to be sky high, but your mom is going to jump a little bit because, you know, it takes uh, you know, a little while for your beneficial bacteria to catch up with the ammonia that's produced in order to convert it to nitrite. So the water volume is what gives you the flexibility and the forgiveness and gives the bacteria a chance to catch up. It dilutes the ammonia and gives your bacteria a chance to catch up without harming your fish and causing ammonia burns and causing your tank to crash. Um, think about your filtration. I got a huge filtration under here. Let me show you my filtration. Boom. So as you can see, I have um, I have plants in there. Okay. And I have uh, pads, a K3 media, little filter pads. I got some bubble rock stuff at the bottom, you know, all that good stuff. So this, 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 and you know, there's my ultraviolet, um, my UV light. So this uh, filtration, you know, this, this tank that I use for filtration for the sun, is bigger than a lot of people's tank, you know. <laughs> you know, so you want to consider that, you know. Um, have plenty, you know, and, and it's big like that because I want to have all the space available to grow as much beneficial bacteria as possible. And as you can see, I have multiple different stages, multiple different types of um, filtration down there. I have the filter pads, I have the, 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 the moving media, or you know, um, with the K3 media. I have the, the lava rocks, I have the, the plants. So you wanna consider that. Make sure you, because uh, your beneficial bacteria is the most important animal that you're going to be keeping in here because it keeps all the rest of the animals alive. All right?
So um, definitely uh, make sure that if you don't do a sun, don't do just one. Can if you go canister filter, do two or three canister filters. Don't do just one, okay? Uh, even if you have like a, a 125 or 200 gallon, you know, 150 or something like that, and the, uh, the canister filter say that it's rated for a 150, 200 gallon tank, uh, don't trust it. Go ahead and get two canister filters, okay? The more the merrier, so that you can have plenty of uh, area to grow that beneficial bacteria. Also, that creates more water volume um, for, you know, to give you the flexibility for when, you, when your ammonia wants to creep up there a little bit, give you a chance to catch up with it, all right, before you have a disaster. Now, um, also, um, you know, as far as purpose is concerned, like those, those uh, wide bar several dollars, uh, those are dither fish, okay? I'm going to address the obvious here. I'm not going to shy away. This tank is uh, pretty overstocked. But it's, you know, uh, some, some people, uh, a lot of people, well, I'm not going to say a lot, most people appreciate my tanks because they realize that I know what I'm doing, <laughs> and I know the risk that I run with the uh, overstock tank thing. And uh, but you do have some people who, oh, that's ridiculous! It's ridiculously overstock. It's grotesquely overstock. Da, da, da. This man, what you don't realize is that I had to actually add fish and add fish and add fish until I got the balance just right. Because not only am I balancing the water chemistry, but I'm balancing personalities and attitudes. So unless you want this big old tank for just a few fish, or if you want this big old tank for, you know, a good number of fish, um, you have to think about how to balance out these personalities and attitudes and stuff like that. I got the wide bar several dollars in there uh, to act as dithers, okay? And you don't want to get just a few. You want the, the several dollars to be comfortable uh, in the tank as well and be confident. So I have six of these large guys in here. They look like I have more because they're so big and take up so much space. But it's six of them, and they distract they distract the uh, monster fish from attacking each other. So they they keep moving and basically just you know when they feel like when one of the, when, those, when those fish feel like attacking each other or fighting or doing something, you know these uh dither fish they act as a nice distraction, you know, and also. Um, it keeps a lot of movement in the tank. It looks it's just, it's just entertaining. It just looks good. See, now notice those um, those two uh, peacock bass. Now, I used to have four of them in here, but I removed two of them because it was just too too crap, too much. Um, it was um, it was it was a little bit more. I had removed some fish because I I did have a little bit more uh, too much of a load on my filtration. So uh, I removed two of them, and as far as personalities is concerned and getting along and all that stuff, yeah, they got along much better when I had the other two in here, and it was four, and the aggression was spread out amongst them, and it didn't have just one guy who wants to pick on the other guy constantly, constantly, constantly. So, um, but it's not to the point where uh, you got one of these guys that are just beat up and suffering and hot and whatever. So. So I, I pay attention to it and I watch it and you know, I, that's just what it is. But that's just an example of having a purpose as far as balancing out these personalities and stuff like that. Um, and of course there's a, there's my true parrot cichlid, he's beautiful. This is the male, the female is hiding back there. There she is. They constantly want to spawn, they keep trying. But this tank is just way too busy for them to do it. And you see that five-year-old's not having no mess off of the true parrot. But these true parrots, Haplarchus siticus, uh, I am going to remove them and put them in their own tank. These uh, red pikes, they want to spawn so bad, I'm going to remove them and put them in their own tank. So, they, so I do have plans, uh, and I'm acting on it. I do have several empty tanks that I thought I got other things that I'm doing with those tanks, um, like upgrade my puffer fish and upgrading my Trimax Cichlid, and I'm going to create another tank for another secret project that I got going on, but 
those are the plans. I'm going to remove these two guys and remove those uh, true parrots and Hoplar Cassidicus, put them in their own tanks. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to remove the uh, Jaguars or not, but some of these fish will eventually have to come out of here. Um, and, and also, um, do know that, yes, you're going to be doing some work. You're going to be doing 50%, 60%, up to 80% water changes every week in order to get all that nitrates out, okay? Um, those plants I have down there, they do a pretty good job of uh, creating, you know, some, some, some cushion, you know, some buffering for the um, nitrates and everything. Um, and I don't have, I don't experience, I don't have uh, any sicknesses and death. Um, Alhamdulillah, I don't have sicknesses and deaths in this tank. I don't have any, uh, you know, it's been a long time since I had any issues in this tank as far as even having to treat it or anything. So obviously I must be doing something right. All of these fish are big and beautiful and active and healthy. And like I said, uh, majority of them, I got them as little itty bitty babies. Believe it or not, that male Hipparchus sinicus, when I started this uh, stint of keep, fish keeping, he was um, one of the very first fish that I bought. I mean, I literally bought him the first day I bought fish. And <laughs> it sounds cruel, but I, it, uh, it was him and a few others. I actually cycled the tank with them. It was an in in tank cycle, a fish in cycle, so to speak. It, it was literally just that. I had no beneficial bacteria built up. It was a in, it was a fish in cycle. And this guy, uh, people say don't get the Hoplarcus or don't get the true pad because they're hard to keep or whatever. But <laughs> look at him. He, he, he's, he's, he's still going strong, all right? Well, anyway, I know this was a super long video. I just wanted to uh, share with you guys that. So there you have it, fish family. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video. <laughs> and uh, those of you who have made it this far and watched it till the end, the very end, thank you very much. I appreciate you for uh, watching to the very end. Of course, the, it helps the algorithm for me not to do such long videos because the algorithm, it looks at uh, how much watching time do people watch the video all the way through or, all that stuff but you know some of you really wanted to know this and some of you uh this is who i do it for i do it for you guys because once upon a time i was on youtube looking for answers and i'm not an expert i'm not brilliant but i do have answers for you because i have had uh, some experiences to share with you all right so thank you guys for coming on this journey um of course i got plenty of other fish and plenty plenty of other things going on down here but We'll get to that when we get to it. This was just me doing a video explaining, uh, you know, so-called monster fish so that uh, some of you who are thinking about getting the monster fish tank with monster fish, uh, I don't want you to feel like uh, to be intimidated by it. And uh, some of you guys aren't intimidated by it, but you just you need to know, uh, need some answers and some ideas. And I'm just sharing my experiences with you, okay? In case, um, thank you very much again. And uh, if you have, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, also, um, go ahead and leave a, a like, a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have it. Uh, please make sure that it's respected, okay? And uh, until next time, you guys, uh, happy fish keeping. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.